Hey everyone, I'm kicking off a new series on my channel today which I'm calling Tech for Designers and we'll be starting by having a look at the hardware that I use. My main computer that I use is this beast here. It's a 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro. When I got it, I bought it refurbished so it wasn't brand new but it had been you know, refurbished to be as if it was brand new, so it was a lot more affordable that way. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM and it's got a graphics card, which makes it nice and speedy and it can keep up with all the work I do, like, you know, giant Photoshop files or video editing. I really love the 15 inch screen because it's big enough for me to actually do all my work on and I don't need an external monitor. Before I purchased this computer and before I moved to England, I was using an iMac back in New Zealand, which is where I moved from, in case you're new. So I was used to having a 27 inch screen with a lot of screen real estate, but with this laptop I've set it to the more space option in the screen display settings, and it actually gives me more than enough space to work with. I haven't found myself to need an external monitor, which is great. The reason I didn't repurchase an iMac when I moved to England was that I didn't know where I was going to end up living long term, you know, in the next five years or whatever. Who knows if I'll be in London, might be somewhere else. And shipping the iMac from New Zealand, it was just going to be way too expensive and impossible. No one would insure it. So I figured that getting a laptop that was really powerful but much more portable was a better way to go. Also, as you can see, I've covered it with stickers. I never really used to be a stickers on the laptop person, but I decided with this one there was just so much space that I had to fill it with something and it's been kind of fun. So even though this laptop is portable, it's very large and it's quite heavy, so it's not something that I like to carry around with me on a daily basis or even taking it to a cafe to work on the weekend is a pain because it's so massive it doesn't fit in my bag. So that is where this guy comes in. This is my newest hardware purchase. It is a 12 inch Retina Gold MacBook. This is an early 2015 model and I think that's the first version of these MacBooks that was brought out. It's only got 8 gigs of RAM so it's obviously nowhere near as powerful as the 15 inch MacBook. But that's okay because this, the purpose of this is to be portable, not to be powerful. I put this guy inside this slimline case and fit it in my handbag to take to work and that way I can do work on my commute in the mornings. I can sit on the tube and edit videos, which has just been amazing for my productivity and getting things done. So yes, it can edit videos, but it's not something that I do the more heavy duty stuff like color correcting on, for example, or exporting the video. I transfer the file back over to the 15 inch laptop and do that bit at home. I really love the keyboard on this laptop, so I do a lot of writing on this as well, because it's just so much nicer to use than the old MacBook keyboards. I'm not a huge fan of the force touch on the trackpad. I know I could turn it off, but I am trying to find ways to make it useful for me, because I figured that it's there for a reason and there must be use for it but I've not found a very useful one yet. So while I don't think I could survive with this as my main computer because it definitely is not fast enough for more complex heavy duty stuff, having this as a second computer to do stuff on the go or for traveling is just amazing. I love it a lot. At work I have a little bit of a different setup. I've got a 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro which is for the most of the time when I'm at my desk anyway plugged into a 4k monitor. I really like having the two screens at work because I can keep emails and slack open on the laptop and then my actual design file or whatever I'm working on open on the big screen. And again having a laptop is really useful because it means I can take it with me to meetings or I can bring it home and work from home if I need to as well. I've never been the type of designer to use a Wacom tablet and that might be strange because I know that it's very common in a lot of designers but I guess I never tried one out at university and so I never got used to it and then now I don't really want to buy one in case I don't like it because that will be a waste of money. And anyway, I'm very happy using just the standard Apple Magic Mouse. This is what I use at work. Everyone goes on about how this is really uncomfortable and annoying to use, but honestly it fits my hand perfectly, so I really like it. I can definitely never go back to having a mouse that had a scroll ball on it. I just like that this is like touch or whatever. And what might sound even stranger is that when I'm at home, I don't use a mouse at all. I'm perfectly happy just using the trackpad that comes on the MacBooks when I'm working at home, even for things like vector work. Never thought that I could do that and that's why I bought a mouse to start with. I don't know, one day I just got used to it. And I think the reason that I do use the mouse at work is because I've also got an external keyboard and I'm looking up at a monitor and the laptop sort of sits to the side of me. So it would be weird to use the trackpad then. I know someone's gonna ask in the comments so I might just address it, but it does seem that most designers do use Apple products. The reason that I use Apple products is because that's what I know. When I went to university, we asked the university what computers would be uh, learning to use in classes, you know, what would be on then because I wanted to get the same one so that I could use all the same shortcuts and things that we were learning. And they said that it would be using Macs, so 
I bought a Mac. My first computer was one of those old white MacBooks. And from then on, I've just continued to buy Macs when I need to upgrade. I really like the design of Apple. They're obviously really well-designed computers, both on the outside and the inside. The Mac OS is absolutely lovely to use. I feel like I can trust Apple that things will be of high quality and that they obviously really care as a company about design and as a designer, I obviously do too. So I respect that and that's why I want to buy their products. And because I mostly use laptops now, and like I said, mostly use the trackpad, Mac trackpads are above and beyond any PC trackpad I've ever seen. Whenever I've used a Windows laptop with a trackpad, it's just been so clunky and laggy and just doesn't feel as effortless as Mac ones do. And when you're designing, when you're working on anything really, you don't want the hardware to be a barrier to getting your ideas out. So the smoother that everything works, the better. So I guess that's a convoluted way of explaining why I like Mac. I don't know. If you've got any thoughts on that, share them down below in the comments because I'm keen to see what you use. Are you a PC or are you a Mac? Gonna finish off with a couple more hardware bits that are not computers but are part of my design process. The first one is my phone. I actually use the camera on this as a scanner when I do hand lettering and need to bring it onto the computer. I also use it to write blog posts or write scripts or whatever when I'm walking down the street or on the tube and don't have a seat so it can't be using my new little laptop. Sometimes I need to take higher quality pictures though, obviously, and that's when I use my Canon 70D which I'm filming on right now. I used to just use either the kit lens or a 50mm Canon lens, but recently, thanks to YouTube Next Up, I got this Sigma 18 to 35mm lens, which is just absolutely beautiful and I really love it. I like to get in my own little world when I'm designing, and so for that, I use headphones. These are the Bang & Olufsen H6 headphones. They're really comfortable to wear for extended periods, which is good because I tend to wear them all day at work, pretty much. The sound quality is really good. I went through a lot of testing before I settled on these ones, and I've actually written a full review in my blog of these, so I'll leave that in a link down below if you want to check it out. Last thing to mention quickly is hard drives. I've got a couple of these guys floating around. I don't have a very good backup system at the moment, to be honest. All of my videos from the past year exist on this hard drive. I do have an automatic backup system to the cloud called Backplays that I use on my computer, but for the most part, my videos are on here, which is obviously not very safe. I do have a plan for improving my backup system though, so once that's in place, I'm going to be doing a video all about file storage and backups as another video in this series. That is everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you've got any questions for me about any of the bits and pieces I mentioned, please leave them in the comments or reach out on Twitter because I'm always keen to chat on there. Let me know what you think of this new series and what you'd like to see from it in future videos. I do have one coming up about the software that I use, so stay tuned for that. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel because I'm gonna be making a lot more videos about design. So I will see you in the next one. Bye.